Uh, so this is a complete shoulder and trap workout, my workout that I've done for many, many years and um, to just freely give it to you guys and I hope it helps you guys out. What I've actually doing at the start, which I, this is what I don't normally do, but I've seen Andrew, uh, Andrew Locke, Dr. Locke. If you guys don't know who he is, check out Andrew Locke. And he's just been explaining some things to me because I've been training now 22 years. So I'm extremely proficient in um, doing my movements, you know, bilaterally at the same time, whereas unilaterally, single arm movement, I need to start becoming a bit more proficient in that and creating some balance in my asymmetry. So I've found like after 22 years now, one, one side of my body is not as developed or not as connected to, even the development might look the same. I don't feel as connected to it when I train. So um, what we're doing here is just getting a warm up in the, in the side deltoid. And in actually recruiting through the side deltoid properly, a lot of people will think that leaning forwards um, will hit your rear delts. It's actually still gonna hit your side deltoid, but um, isolating it completely, leaning forwards with your hips out and coming into the movement to contract your side delt. So we're just doing that to start with before we move on to the rest of the workout. So like anything with bodybuilding, it's time under tension. You wanna keep tension on the whole time. I don't wanna have any pausing or relaxing went out without any of the movements. So it's okay to contract a bit and squeeze at the top of the movement, but never letting gravity take over and just swinging the, the movement. So you're seeing it's tensions constantly on my, the middle of my shoulder. This is just like two or three warm up sets, just 12, 15 reps, just squeezing the muscle getting it warm and then we're actually gonna go into some, some loading. I mean, with, with training shoulders, really, you should have a look at yourself, have a long hard look at yourself. Now, but have a look at your physique and see the strengths and weaknesses. So you've got your, your deltoid, and you, it's always been broken down in three, anterior, middle, and posterior deltoid, front, middle, and rear. And you can have a look at, if you do a, like a rear double bicep pose, you can see the shoulder capsule, and you can see it in its full proportions. And you can get a, if you get a photo of that, you'll be able to see if the front delt is lacking or the rear delt is lacking or the dominant, the side delt might be dominant. So what you'd like to do is, Always target your weak point first, that's my opinion. So if you want really big side shoulders, side delts, you'd always start with the side raises like we're doing here. Standing side raises, machine side raises. If your front delts are lacking, you'd start with maybe a front raise or a dumbbell press or a machine press to recruit through your front delt. If it's rear, I mean, this is can be interpreted as two different movements, a seated rear raise and a seated side raise. And the difference that I'm gonna explain is a, a seated rear raise is when you're keeping your elbows rolled forwards and only creating that much of a movement to recruit through your delts. If any higher, you start to come into your traps, I've found with my, with, um, my training experience. Whereas a side, a seated side raise, so leaning, still leaning forwards like we're doing in the warm up, but you're actually coming up and out. So your wrist, elbow and shoulder finish in the same position. And still tension, don't let it drop. Keep tension on the way down, tension on the way up. Fine with these movements, the, wide, the wider you go, the less trap you'll feel recruiting. If you start shrugging it on the movement, traps can be, become involved and recruited. And it's like anything, like it's a, it's a skill set, like a, it is shooting a basketball. The more that you do a movement, the more proficient you get at it, and the better your recruitment pattern will be. And the, the way I train is this way as a progressive overlay, so building up to in even increments to one hard set. Come on, come on. All right, ready? Another couple. Up. Two. One. Good job. Set, man. Excellent.
Nice, bro. Strong. Let's go. Keep him coming. Let's go. Again. Come on. Up high. Let's go. Let's work. Up. Again. More. Keep him coming. Let's go. Push. Again. Push. Good. Up. <laughs> if you're lucky enough to have a machine side raise, I highly recommend it. Alternatively, well, the benefit of doing a side raise with a bent arm versus a straight arm is it takes away supraspinatus out of the movement. So you can, you'll find that you, anyone with shoulder injuries or issues, they'll find a better recruitment with their arms bent. So you can do it with a dumbbell. It's still a little bit unstable versus a machine. I find this takes all the pain away if you've got any delt issues. Um, and it's quite simple. It's like you're trying to recruit anything with deltoid. You really want to be pulling through your elbow, not your hand, because your hand can, you can come into other other parts of the deltoid or into your into your back like you want to just keep it all on your shoulder by keeping it the range of motion pushing through the elbow And if you're someone like it, this is where it's challenging when you're training someone, it's completely individualized and it always depends on someone's biomechanics and their ability to connect with the muscle. So if you're someone who can come up to here and feel it in your deltoids and you can come in even further and feel it in your deltoids, keep going, do it all the way. I'm someone who, if I come any higher than this, my traps just recruit and take over and I don't feel a connection in my deltoid, but I've had other clients and train, train them where they come all the way up and they can come all the way with delts being recruited and not traps being involved. So it all depends on how you can connect. And the most important part of muscle growth is your connection with the muscle. If no matter what you have something being teaching from someone else that you really are inspired by, if you're not connected to the muscle, you're not connecting the way that they've taught you, do something else. Because it's, you know, it's too time enduring and too much length and too much energy to waste your time not doing what you, you, know, you wanna do. The way I train is I always go light, very light on my first set, no matter what. I just feel like you need to have a strong, you know, mind to muscle connection, increase your proprioception, your coordination in that exercise, because you could, you could be warm in other things, but then cold in a particular movement. And if you're cold, stabilizing muscles aren't, aren't recruited and connected as well or sequenced right. So when you go into the movement, your body will recruit in a way it, it shouldn't. And that's when injuries can happen. So I always go from really basically light and then progress up in even increments till I reach my hardest set and that's my version of progressive overload. The deltoids, if you want to build up the middle delt, that's what we're targeting right now. And then we'll go on to the front and rear. Rear delts are too big. <laughs> Finish them last. <laughs> Incline dumbbell press for your shoulders. So I'm ne I never do a vertical press. I think it's just dangerous on your spine and your joints. And especially getting the weight up in the movement, kicking it up, it's just really difficult. Puts too much strain on your body. Um, and getting in and out of the movement, I always say it's just as important as the movement itself. I mean, if you're getting in it, ex expelling so much energy, just trying to get the weight to starting position, then you're losing effectively reps in the set. You don't want that to happen. You want either have someone who can help lift the weight to you or leverage it up with the least amount of strain as possible. And so with the dumbbell press, what I like to do is sit them on my knees and just guide my leg up to my shoulder.
Yeah. You know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that guy? Just bring your own posters into Doherty's and he's just like, look at me. I think you get, once you get to like these working brackets with these compound big compound lifts, you need to make sure that you're, you know, rest and recruit. Yeah, true. It's good. So make sure you can get that maximal set, you know? You think you did all these build-up sets to get to these ones, right? Strong. Let's go. One, two, three. Oh. Okay. Tight. Right. One, let's go. Easy. Two. Again. Three up. Nice, let's go. Again, strong. Come on, strong, let's go. Push. Let's go. Push. More, let's go. Up. Again. Come on. I'm gonna. Good. Nice. Right. Slow, nice. Monster set. Oh, I'm not training for this. Good, good set. <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we leave those for someone else to take care of later, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah the full prick move. That's, this is for the skinny guy that wants to show how strong his single arm rows are, and he lifts up three inches off the floor. I try and do two exercises for each head of my shoulder, front, middle, rear, and where I started because I feel like my rear needs more development. Ah, middle needs more development, so started with middle, then I've gone to the front, finishing on rear. So we just done a dumbbell press. Now as a, you can do a barbell press or a machine. I definitely feel like it's safer. Um, what I like to do getting into this is, is just put as less pressure on your shoulder joint. I don't want to be starting from this point here. I want to be starting just as I would with the barbell. So I put the seat right down for myself. And getting into the, into the machine, I slide back and drop my shoulders down and, and tucking my lats down in the movement, um, like my armpits into my lats. And then what I like to do is not have my elbows vertical directly underneath it. What I like to do is look at the angle of the machine because we're actually pushing back that way to protect my, my joints. I actually keep my elbow in that same alignment. So I'm, I'm actually starting here because you see my body's back as well as the machines back and my elbows are slightly forward. So the leverage is much easier on my, than causing pain. So my elbows start forward. So I'm, I'm almost like, if I were to just, you know, just for argument's sake, just have it like, it would seem like it's, I'm starting from this point here in front of my body. But it's just a much easier way to still recruit through my, you know, anterior deltoid, but not have the pain associated with it. And it's the same time and attention to recruit it properly. If you have elbow pain, I mean, I know it's a plug for my sponsor, but elbow sleeves, swing them around to protect your, your elbows. And it's, if you've ever used knee sleeves or knee wraps, it's very similar for that for your elbow. Um, it does help you lift more weight, I believe, as well. It's protecting your joint. a lot and a lot of people ask me how to do this movement so if you think of it like it seems strange but like skiing almost so you're trying to get your your body in a position sitting back into it knees slightly bent chest up you're starting with the dumbbells by your side you'll start with the raise 
So you're recruiting through your rear delts and you'll finish with a row, but it's not a bent row like you're doing a dumbbell row. You're finishing with the row, so your arms are only bending, rowing that much in the movement. So although you're overloading and isolating through your delt with the raise, your rear deltoid, when you do get to that point there, you're still contracting. Now this is where you can go wrong by keep continuously rowing and coming into a shrugging movement and your traps coming into it. Avoid that, even if you need to go out wider to avoid the traps, come out wider. You just need to play around with it. Like I said, it always depends on the connection with the muscle. So if you don't respond well here, you may respond better here, may respond better here, but just know you start with the straight arm and you finish with a row, but you're never allowing your body, your hands to go in front of your shoulder. You don't want to let the momentum start. You want to start with the rear delts. And I think that's the biggest thing about like trying new movements to create new stimulus. You yeah, know? Well, that's what I'm learning off you as well. For sure. I said iron sharpens iron, so I'm going to be learning stuff <laughs> and growing and so help each other. <sighs> yep, so come back a bit more. So, yep, there you go. So wrist back. So finish with a row with your wrist back. Yeah, so almost try and bring your dumbbell into the back pocket. There you go. There you go. Stretch. Belt squeeze. Yep. Keep the connection, keep it, keep it on the way down and up from there. So never release it. Oh, okay. Yep. There you go. Down straight. Yep. The training system I use and I get asked about it, how to do it correctly because it's communicated wrong and I hope I can get a point across that's easy to understand. It's an eight week system and it's not pyramiding. So it's not week one, 12 reps, first set, 10 reps, second set, eight reps, third set, and fourth rep, um, and six reps, the fourth set. It's like you're doing everything on the first week is 12 reps. Every set, every building set, and the overload set, it's 12 reps specifically. You're doing that for two weeks, that's weeks one and two, and then weeks three and four, instead of doing 12 reps on every set, you're doing 10 reps. So you're saving two reps in reserve every single set that you do. And you do that for weeks three and four, and then weeks five and six, you go to eight reps. Every building set, every overload set, like we've done today, should be eight reps. And then the last two weeks is six reps. Every building set and the hard set is six reps. You're not doing a combination of reps in the one workout. It's the straight amount of reps the whole time. And because you're doing, you think of it, on the eighth week, you're doing six reps, you're so much stronger, and you've done all these eight weeks, of, eight weeks of connecting to the body with the same exercises in the same sequence for all the eight reps. So in theory, you can almost be twice as strong if you're doing you know, a 20 kilo shoulder press for 12 reps. Effectively, you could be able to do 40 kilos by the six reps. So, and then the next time you start that system of 12 again, instead of starting at 20 kilos, uh, finishing the hard set at 20 kilos would be 22 and just by constant progress you're always progressing up in strength every eight weeks and that's i believe it's a really safe way to do progressive overload because confidence comes from doing and i think one of the biggest issues people have is the fear of the weight being too heavy and the risk of injury and by doing this system it's you're doing quite light in the first two first two weeks of 12 reps and you're just slowly progressing up week after week until you hit that hard the hardest weeks, which are weeks eights, the eight, eight rep weeks and the six rep weeks. But um, yeah, it's, I'll probably confuse it, but it's just do it eight, eight weeks, an eight week system, 12 reps on the first week. Every week, it's just you're dropping a couple reps. I always say, be really strict. Yeah. You can go from, when I give teachings, it's you can go from strict to loose, but never loose to sloppy. Yeah. So you go from the strict form in every building set and as many reps as you can on your hard set, but then the last couple reps on your harder set, you can go a little bit loose with your form. Never sloppy though, you never wanna, in this movement, you can go from strict to, you know, a little bit loose, but you never wanna start and like swing it and go, go sloppy. <laughs> yeah, look, it's not about, bodybuilding is, can be mistaken about with just moving weight overall when it's not, the body's a master compensator and it will succeed in whatever way it wants to get the weight up, but you're specifically trying to target a particular muscle and stimulate it to growth. And if you're not recruiting in the muscle, you're not gonna stimulate it to grow. Let's 
get it. Come on. Nice, come on. No, it's fantastic. It's like two Thai girls walking on your back. <laughs> oh man, wrist back, wrist back. Get it back. A little bit loose on these ones. Yep, there you go. So rear delts in the reverse pec fly. Okay, so, um, soup, na soup nation, I think holding, holding a bowl of soup, pro nation, think of a pro basketball player, pronated grip here. And what you're wanting to do is without using your traps to close in, you're going out wide and hitting your rear delts. I don't go back any further than this point here. I'm actually not coming back because my traps jump into it and I'm not going too far inwards because also my rear delts relax. So I'm doing like a quite a small movement when I'm just isolating my rear deltoids. What I like to do is this movement, just for my rear delts, and after I've built up and overloaded, I, I change my grip around and I activate through my traps. And that's when I'm, I'm doing, um, recruiting through my traps and retracting my scapula in the movement. Shoulder shrug is quite simple. It's just keeping your arm, keeping your body locked completely straight. Even a slight bend in your knees to protect your lower back if you want to stay completely upright. And it's just really shrugging your shoulders upwards. What I've found is I just connect with my body better if I'm leaning slightly forwards, connecting with my traps better. And as I shrug, then I, can, I just put a little bend in my elbow as well. I can just come up, feel like I can come up with more range without it affecting my, like hurting my neck. As long as I keep the tension on. Oh, man. So weird because it's like it should just feel exactly the same straight than a bend in my arms, but I can just connect way more when I can bend my elbows in the middle. I'll movement. give it a crack. For me, it's just for me. It's part of learning, bro. Yeah, for me, it's just a, a deeper contraction. Yeah, good. So that's my, sh my shoulder workout, and those are really basically my go-to exercises. I mean, a couple of things for side delts, for front delts, for rear delts, and really for my whole career of my 22 years of training, 
I've pretty much stuck to the same exercises. I've just changed the sequence, the order around. So sometimes my front delts will be first or my rear delts will be first based on, um, you know, what I need to work on at any given time. But you don't need to, don't overcomplicate things. I feel like there's a huge limiting barrier when you're trying to do too many things at once. And when you do that, nothing ever works. So just keep it simple and stick to the basics. And, you know, even if you were to do eight weeks of all just 12 reps every exercise for the whole eight weeks, you're going to progress over that time. And just keep it simple and just build up slowly, even increments, never do anything crazy. Don't jump from like we did, don't jump from first set, the weight we used to the set we used in the last set. Don't jump, don't make that kind of an incremental jump. It's just dangerous. So keep it safe and don't rush it. That's what everyone has an issue with. They want it now, they want it now. It's, and I get people in here, they're like, I'll do anything. I'll do anything to achieve what you've achieved. You tell me, you tell me what to do or do whatever cardio you want, whatever food you want, whatever training you want. And I'm like, okay, well then, will you do, you know, six meals a day every day? Yeah, will you train six days a week every week? Yeah, I'll do that. And I'm like, do that for 10 years. And like, I don't want to do that. There's got to be a quicker way. But it's like, it's like a slap in my face. If there was a quicker way, I would have damn done it. There's no quick way to this. It just takes time to put muscle on. And, and but you can save time doing the right thing as opposed to trying to reinvent the wheel and doing a whole bunch of fancy stuff and doing all these weird little things that have, like they really can go nowhere. Like you have to think of the foundation and movements. If the foundation of the movement, the setup only allows you to lift a certain amount of weight, then it's not gonna be long until you max out that exercise or you get injured because your body's unstable in the movement. Like you need to just stick to the basics and those are the ones you can build upon time after time after time. So I hope that helps.